And the first um, habitat that I found that's been occupied by river otters, well-established habitats on Long Island, is on the north shore of Nassau County um, in, the, in the Mill Neck Oyster Bay area. Hmm. And from there, it seems that they are moving eastward yes. along the north shore out to the east end of Long Island. But the whole south shore of, of Long Island, I've, I have had one um, latrine site that I found, but it wasn't well established. And I think it was an individual that never really um, set up their own territory in that area. So as far as I can tell, we have no river otters along the south, the south shore of Long Island, and very few on the east end of Long Island so far. Maybe we could take a look at that video you found and show the viewers what the river otter looks like yeah, and how it does catch fish, and that might be interesting. That's a good idea because they're adorable. <laughs> Let's watch that. As spring begins, snow and ice melt into flowing streams. The playful river otter, common in lakes and streams throughout the United States and Canada, enjoys its new freedom. During the winter, the otter could only fish through small ice holes. Now it has access to a wide open river. Gracefully gliding through the water, the otter pursues a prey. Using its muscular tail for both propulsion and steering, it relies on its sensitive whiskers to sense the movement of fish. This pursuit has a satisfying outcome. Okay, so um, one of the things that the general public on Long Island um, uh, was, was um, confused about, I guess you could say, with the River Otter Project was the fact that we don't really have a lot of rivers on Long Island, and yet we have river otters um, that historically occupied all of the Long Island region. And as the video showed, the river otters do like um, waterways, streams, and rivers and such, but they also uh, like to do their fishing in ponds, and they also like to do their fishing in this area in the estuaries. Any place with a slow-moving fish that they can easily catch in relatively shallow waters. So a lot of our estuaries on the east end and the south shore are perfect for um, river otters to catch fish in. I mean, to differentiate between the river otter and the sea otter, I guess that's, you know... You know, people think of otters, That's they right. think of marine mammals, so to speak, because, right. uh, but then we've got the, the, the kind of, in all states in the country, river otters. I right, mean, the sea otters just... are a completely different animal right. and uh, much larger than the river otter. But the, the river otter does occupy um, a lot of coastal habitat mm -hmm. along the east coast and the west coast. And um, we, maybe we could go to the shot of, of uh, a typical east end um, otter habitat. Sure. Which a, is the Plum Island picture. Okay, that's a, you took this picture? Right. Now, this is uh, the, not the Plum Island that most Long Islanders know. There you go. But it's, uh, it's a little island in Mishomic Preserve where uh, Mike Laspia had sighted otters on several occasions. And I was able to document their latrine sites. And this is the kind of thing that they really love to use. It's a small island that um, is very hard for people to access. Mm -hmm. And so it's quiet, it's a place they can rest during the day and then resume their fishing at the night. Oh, so and they're nocturnal? They're mostly nocturnal. So even in terms more of, their... of a reason a lot of people would never see right, one. Right, <laughs> right. And this can get access to the bay in the, uh, in the background okay. and, and hunt for fish in the bay there. That's now right. some, some biologists uh, have, have claimed that the river otter needs access to fresh water to rinse its fur off, otherwise the fur loses its insulation value mm. after it's been in the salt water a long time. But I haven't been able to verify that. Interesting. But that's that's an uh, that would be a limiting factor for some sections of Long Island where sure. there's salt water but no Kinda accessible like the fresh water the south bodies. Shore, like you were talking about well, earlier. I'm, and on the north on the north shore of Long Island, there's a long stretch um, on the east end where there really is no easy access to uh, fresh water. It's kind of a bluff coastline. Interesting. I was reading um, your study, which is on your website, which is mikebattini.com. Right. 
And um, it's a great website. It's got a lot of good stuff. It, um, it's nice because uh, information on your books. You're right. Okay. A great author on all kinds of uh, environmental stuff. But I read that um, if people see something in the water, and a good way to decide if it's either a muskrat, <clears throat> excuse me, or a, a river otter, is because the muskrat's kind of just going from point A to point B, where the river otter will dive. Right. You know, right. because they're they're more foraging and stuff like that. So. Right. There's, there's. Um, we, I do have some photos. Maybe we could bring up the photo of the, um, the beaver, mm -hmm. which uh, we do have the one beaver, and hopefully someday we'll have more. But when a beaver or a muskrat, there's the also beaver. there's also a muskrat photo. Basically, all you're going to see of the animal in the water is is the head mm -hmm. and maybe the very, very top of the body. A lot of times when I when I'm out canoeing or kayaking and I see a muskrat, mm -hmm. the first thing I notice is just a V in the water. Sure. And you really need binoculars to see that it's the mm -hmm. head of a muskrat. But those animals are in the water going from point A to point B. The mm -hmm. beaver heading from its lodge to the area where it's going to get woody vegetation to cut down and bring back to the lodge. Mm -hmm. um, so you know it's a beaver if it's carrying a big branch as sure. it's swimming across. <laughs> Um, and the muskrat is also going from its um, thatch huts, little lodges or bank dens, mm -hmm. to feeding areas. And they're I generally read... going in a straight line. They're not diving down. They're mm -hmm. staying at the surface. When the river otter is in the water, it's hunting for fish. Right. And so the river otter is going to be diving, popping up, diving. It's going to sure. be um, not really traveling in, a, in, in one direction as a general rule. The other thing with river otters um, is that they, when they come up with a fish, they'll use their um, rear feet that have webbed uh, webbing that, that enables them to get up. And they get up high out of the water. So you have the head and part of the neck will be exposed. And if it's a small enough fish, it'll eat it right there in the water. How big are these creatures? The, oh. the river otter is, is, when you see any of these animals on land, you, you can't mistake them for, for one another because they're so different. But the river otter is about four feet from the tip of tail to the wow. nose. And the muskrat is, is more on the order of about 18 inches at wow. the most. Wow, big difference. It's a big difference, yes. Interesting. And um, at the end of your study, you had uh, some forward-looking um, statements in that some of the major problems with the river otters are collisions with automobiles and loss of habitat. Right. So what, you know, what can we do to, besides, you know, slowing down well, on the roads and stuff? Uh, yeah, so one of the issues is the, the road kills, which I was actually kind of surprised. Mm -hmm. But then um, I realized that where they do get out of the water, it's usually a dam that blocks their access to continue down the waterway. Mm -hmm. And on top of the dam is a road. So um, they will dart out. Um, they're not going to be like a turtle. So mm -hmm. it, it's very difficult to avoid them. And what I'm trying to do is, is modify some of the dams so that they can get around them without having to cross the road. So there's a couple places in Oyster Bay where we're trying to um, create like a ramp that they can use to get up and over the dam. The dams That'd aren't very good. tall. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other issue with river otter is that they're high on the food chain. They're a top of the food chain animal. So any contaminants in our waterways are going to bioaccumulate in their tissues. Sure. So that's a concern that uh, the New York State um, DEC has with, mm -hmm. with river otters throughout the state. And one of the ways that you can help that out is doing your part as someone who lives near the water Mm -hmm. and maintain your property without using pesticides and herbicides. And um, I like to put in a plug for my friend Kevin McAllister, the baykeeper. You mm -hmm. can get involved in his programs to maintain high quality of our local waterways. Sure, and he was uh, instrumental in helping you funding your Right, the, the Long research. Island River Otter Project is, is uh, sponsored by the Peconic Baykeeper. That's and great. if you'd like to help out with the project, you can contact the Baykeeper program and donate to the River Otter Project. Oh, that would be terrific. And this is, project isn't complete. You're, you're moving forward with different, you know. Right. We, we uh, have a commitment from Long Island Autobahn to purchase some remote cameras, and we want to set up some cameras at a